So, you've taken your self-defense course. So, you've learned karate. You've gained some belts. You learned some self-defense. Technique number one, technique number two, technique number three. Did your instructor remind you that there are different heart rates that the human body uses? And those different heart rates either help how strongly you can move or hinder how well you can move. If he's not teaching you about that, then he's not teaching you skills for real self-defense. Let me make an analogy. You play football, you play soccer, you play basketball, and they have you do something called wind sprints up and down the court, up and down the court, up and down the court or the field. And they say to you, you're conditioning. Well, not only are they conditioning you, but they're teaching you and getting your heart rate up so that you could move for longer periods of time with coordination at a heart rate that you've trained yourself to go into. Did you know that when you become afraid or you become stressed in a self-defense situation, that the heart rate shoots up, the respiration increases, Adrenaline gets pumped into the body. The body now has involuntary motions of fast muscle movement. Some people have thought about that and they think that's fear. No, it's not fear. It's the body saying to you, I'm ready to fight or I'm ready to run. However, when those heart rates start to go up, this is what happens to you. Your fine motor skills, for example, if your heart rate was up, in a situation of fear, you couldn't tie your shoes. You couldn't put a key in a door to unlock a door. Your fine motor skills diminish. And now you've learned all these wonderful karate kicks and punches and joint locks and throws and movements. But what happens is that complex skills begin to deteriorate. When I teach my students self-defense, I teach them from two different ends. One end are some of the techniques that are traditionally taught. But on the other end, I teach them self-defense techniques that involve gross muscular strength. You ever watch a bar fight? In the beginning of the fight, when the men start the fight, everything's real fast and all of a sudden it slows down and they're like old sumo wrestlers and you hear their breath going, uh, 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 and they're fighting and grappling and wrestling and everything slows down. That's because they have moved past that point. And when the heartbeat goes up to that rate, all you're left with are gross motor skills. So if you haven't trained your self-defense motions, your chops, your kicks, your punches, your palms, your elbows, to do gross motor functions, then you're going to find yourself at a loss for power and at a loss for ability. Finally, so the gross motor skills, by the way, uh, are swinging and moving and hugging and pushing. Put that to your self-defense. If you watch MMA, you also notice when fights go into the latter rounds, although they're conditioned athletes, everything slows down. And the individuals don't have the same alacrity and speed that they had in the beginning of the match. Your heart rate can go from 70 beats per minute to 120 beats per minute in one half second under the proper conditions. Let's talk about heart rates and what happens with the body. And I'll give you a couple of very strange examples, but I think you'll find it quite interesting. At 115 beats per minute, your finger and eye hand coordination begin to diminish, but you can still perform. At 145 beats per minute, depending on who you are or what you are, your complex skills begin to deteriorate at 145 beats per minute. Wait a minute, your auditory brain begins to shut down somewhat. At 175 beats per minute, you begin to have visual tracking skills. That is, you get tunnel vision. Now, I'll give you some examples if you've seen this in film and you've seen this in motions. Right? I recall when I played football, and so my coach would pull me out of the game 
in the height of the game and try to give me some orders and things to do. And when he was talking to me, it was like he was talking to me down a tube. Very hard because my auditory skills are dumped. If you'll notice a lot of times in movies, when they're showing war movies or attacks of warehouses and police, you'll see them when they have their weapons, they're moving their heads around like this, up and down this way, instead of just looking straight or looking with their eyes. The reason is because they created a tunnel vision at 175 beats per minute. And so therefore, the peripheral vision begins to shut down. If you ever played a sport, you know exactly what I'm talking about because your heart rate was up. Now, in terms of uh, police work, or in terms of individuals actually trying to um, do something of that particular nature, right, they're human beings. And so therefore, they have those tracking skills also dumped on them. And it could be responsible sometimes for the strange decisions that they make. Finally, here's a strange analogy for you. Right? At 175 beats per minute, you begin to have difficulty remembering. And so therefore, if someone's asked you to recall the circumstances that you were in when you were at 175 beats or more per minute, it would take you about 24 hours before you could remember 30% of the details. It would take you up to 72 hours to remember the 50% of the details. And finally, 72 hours plus to remember 100% of the details. That's the strange thing. And so therefore, what happens is, is that when, for example, a husband kills a wife, his heartbeat is up. And so therefore, he doesn't remember the details of how he did it, even though he's the one that did it. Finally, a lot of times I see on television, I see police situations. And the policemen have got to get better training, in my opinion. They've got to learn about this heartbeat thing, because at 185 to 220 beats per minute, some people go into something that's called hypervigilance. And hypervigilance, what you do is you, the last thing that you remember doing, you continue to do involuntarily. Now, here's my example. The policeman is saying to the suspect, stay down, stay down, stay down, and he's trying to hold the suspect down. And the last thing that the suspect remembered was, get up, get up, get up. So, across the board, what happens is this. We have two individuals in a state of hypervigilance, and strange things can happen. I'm not saying that I'm covering for the police. I'm not saying I'm covering for the individuals that continue to resist the police, but I am saying that more training has got to be brought into so a person in hypervigilance can be dealt with in a different manner than I think is presently being dealt with. There you are now. You know your self-defense. You've learned your techniques. Your instructor is a good instructor. But there's something that you have to learn how to do. You must learn how to deal with the heightened state that happens when a person is trying to survive. That could be any of the above things that I spoke of, or it could be a state of hypervigilance. Think about it.